we had a request from a faculty member to build a thoracotomy trainer for the emergency medicine residents at Washington Hospital Center. It's a, something they don't get to do very often, um, but it may be valuable to someone in the future in their practice when they, when they go out into the world. I think it's just a procedure that doesn't happen very often. Um, you know, it's indicated for penetrating trauma. For the emergency medicine people, generally it's a trauma surgeon doing this procedure, but when these doctors go out into the world, they may be called upon to do this in a rural setting or if they don't have the, the other staff in place. Um, so it's something they may do in the future, but they don't, you know, they don't see it very often. I did some significant research on the internet. There's, there's a few videos that exist. And then as far as the build, probably took about 20 hours, spaced over a few days. And so the research phase and then, and then the build, um, kind of figuring out how to do it. We didn't see anything that existed commercially. You know, we didn't, we didn't find anything like that. I mean, I, I got the request. It was a pretty short time frame for us to do it in. So that was also a necessity to use things that we had here in the simulation space. We couldn't go out and, and get anything and, and, and test it. The nice thing about this was that we used uh, primarily, I would say, about 95% uh, things that we had that were hospital products. We used ET tube stylets and Yankauer suction catheters to simulate ribs. So we inserted the ET tube stylet into the suction catheter and then drilled the suction catheter to the base of the CPR mannequin that we used. And by doing this, we were able to, to fold the whole rib over, um, and it was actually a pretty nice fit uh, for the angle and, and how a rib should look. To simulate the lung, we used a non-rebreather mask um, and an ET tube. So I drilled a hole into the top of the CPR mannequin and inserted the ET tube through the hole and then attached an ambu bag to the top of the ET tube. We were able to wrap the bag in some pink silicone, uh, which made it appear to be more similar to lung tissue. When the participant opened the chest, um, we, were, we were ventilating the ambu bag and, and creating what would hopefully look like a nice uh, lung um, inhaling and exhaling. We used a, a chicken breast to simulate the heart, and so we wrapped that in a glove and stuffed inside there was IV tubing. We attached a dantrolene gun to the IV tubing to simulate the gush of blood that, that rushes out if uh, you know, there's a penetrating wound to the heart, essentially. And so um, that was pretty awesome to see the residents. You know, I would be on the other end and squeezing the dantrolene gun, and a big you know, geyser of fake blood would come out of the, the chicken breast. Yeah. I think that's the, the beauty of it, is that you can use things that you have. You know, so these aren't special order. They're not something that you have to go out to the Home Depot and buy. I mean, they're all things that are routine hospital products that, that anyone should have in a simulation space. It's always interesting to learn more about these procedures, doing the research on them, learning how they're done, the steps that are required, and so I think you're almost doing a reverse build in a sense where you're starting from scratch but learning how to create a, a human model essentially, and so the anatomy all has to be researched and appropriate, and learning how to simulate that I mean I think is a good learning experience. It was fun to build, it was, it was definitely fixing, pro you know, figuring out how to create a solution to a problem that we had. We were able to create a pretty realistic thoracotomy simulation with limited time and using primarily products that we had in the simulation space. My name is Jesse Jameson. I work for Cytel in Washington, D.C., and I'm a clinical simulation technologist.